The British Pilgrimage Trust defines pilgrimage as a journey with purpose on foot to holy, wholesome, or special places. Unfortunately, coronavirus has prevented and continues to prevent many of us from undertaking such journeys. This isn't the first time people have been prevented or discouraged from going on pilgrimage though. In the medieval period, pilgrimages were arduous, expensive, and dangerous, making them untenable for even the most devout. We know that monks and nuns who had taken vows of enclosure were in fact forbidden from going on pilgrimages. They, like us today, had to develop creative substitutes for the pilgrimage experience. The resulting virtual pilgrimages employed numerous stimuli, including written accounts describing the Holy Land, evocative images, and physical performances, to create a surrogate for Holy Land pilgrimage, which they could enact within their cloister walls. As many of us find ourselves cloistered within our own homes, Guy Hayward of the British Pilgrimage Trust leads us on a modern day virtual pilgrimage from Islipped to Christchurch Cathedral in Oxford. We invite you to virtually join us. Church, the medieval church of St. Nicholas Islip, where Saint Edward the Confessor, who was also a king, was born. He was born in Islip and he gave this church to Westminster Abbey uh, when, he was, when he was there and to St. Peter and the abbots of Westminster. And but they can't find him here, but he was a very important man. He gave his crown to a beggar and a generally loved person. He was an original patron saint of England, which is great because St. George became one later and then there's also St. Edmund. So very important man, born here. Hello, so we are walking this pilgrimage today on 7th of October, which is around the time of St. Edward's big day, um, which I think is the 13th or 14th of October and the founding of Westminster Abbey is the 13th of October. So this, we're walking this pilgrimage, this day pilgrimage from Islip to Oxford at the best time of year. We can follow the lead of medieval monks and nuns and engage the senses such as sight or sound to help us travel through our mind's eye Medieval nuns recreated the physical journeying of pilgrimage by walking the same distance within their convent walls. You can do the same by figuring out the distance between you and a meaningful location and then walking local circuits until you virtually reach your destination. St. Giles, which is, the, which is what this lovely church is dedicated to, the person, he is one of the 14 holy helpers, which is the kind of like mega saints of the communion of saints, which is like in polytheistic religion, you have all the different gods. But in Christianity, you have all these different saints, and they're good for different things. Like, he is good for cripples, childhood fears, and depression. And was a, a great hermit, and his tomb became a great place of pilgrimage. So, perfect place to stop. St. Giles's Church, Noak. Giles was initially invoked as protection against the Black Death. So in this time of, can't say the word, we should all be invoking St. Giles. So here we have a medieval village cross, which would have been used to mark the beginning of processions or basically a kind of central focal point for the village on the village green. and. It would also serve as a point for people to meet the market. It's also close to the village church. So communities were linked between the places of gathering for rituals, as well as for ordinary things like markets and, and then more fun festivities like processions, all in a small area. Okay, so here we have St. Christopher 
who has a beanstalk, or should I say a pilgrim staff, with the Christ child on his shoulder. And you see, he's a traveller, so very, um, very good for pilgrimage. Also, if you look at him, you will not die an evil death this day. So whenever you see St. Christopher, you're going to be okay for that day only. Um, and if you also look at his feet, which you can't see probably from here, but there are octopi, octopuses and fish. So we finally got to Oxford and we're here at St. Giles's Church. Um, Giles was patron saint of the poor. We've talked about him before at Noak Church. Yew berries. And if you eat the yew berry, the flesh on the outside is great. But if you, you mustn't eat the, the black pith in the middle. Spit it out. The most delicious fruit. For those who can't go on actual pilgrimage during this time, we hope this video has helped stir your imagination. For, as Bernard of Clairvaux said, the object of monks is to seek out not the earthly, but the heavenly Jerusalem. And this is not by proceeding with their feet, but by progressing with their feelings.